for August the 28th, 2015, we talk about I Am Bread, YouTube Gaming, and we ask you about your favorite unjustly maligned games. Welcome to the 118th level. My name is Cole Ross. I'm Dennis Furia. I'm Jala Prendes. And I'm Ben Urkel. And you are listening to The Level. It's a podcast for people who love video games. Uh, Jala, thank you so much for filling in for David, who uh, had to disappear under mysterious circumstances. We hope he's okay. I he's hope completing... so, too. I haven't heard from him in a while. <laughs> <laughs> he is completing the Black Ops mission that Ben started in Russia, I believe it was last week. <laughs> yeah. No, we're, 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 we're tag teaming it. <laughs> oh gosh does anybody have uh have an anecdote <laughs> whose life is interesting <laughs> just taking a quick poll i have i have literally all of my bosses up through like three levels uh in, in uh traveling right now so the office is nice and quiet hmm yeah that's good that and passes for interesting. <laughs> yeah well quiet <laughs> you know what i know what i can do uh with this intro here gary has a kickstarter yeah talk Ooh. about that yeah so gary, tell us about the kickstarter cole <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm not involved with it aside from this being uh you know uh, associated with the network so gary from uh um, abject suffering watch out for fireballs and bonfire side chat has launched a kickstarter for a uh for a book actually uh that is kind of in the style of the worlds of power um the uh, books from the late 80s early 90s uh, uh books based on nintendo games that are kind of written in this crazy style um and it is uh kind of set in this or assumes this alternate reality where a dark souls like game came out on the nes and so the book is called souls of darkness and uh and yeah it is it is very much in that uh in in that style uh the 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 uh the the, the pitch video is hilarious and yep. um all of the all of the uh kind of uh, rewards are pretty good and he's most of the way there so if you haven't checked this out uh there's an easy link that we have it's duckfeed.tv slash souls of darkness and uh go 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 look there and see what's happening in the in the in the fallen lost kingdom of coldran <laughs> <laughs> which is what the kingdom is named i think there's so there's there's that um branches us into another medium and i think there's only like two or three mediums of entertainment that we're not actually in yeah yeah we got <laughs> we got video coming soon and we've got uh huh i'm, I'm wondering I mean, we, we, we got audio on lock we, gonna... we need we need well we even we even have a game because gary did that as well mm -hmm. i was about mm -hmm. to say we need an official like duck feed video game but we We've got one made by one of our one of our hosts. Yeah, uh, there's there's not a lot left. Um, yeah. Smoke signals. We probably need to get into at some point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do it like semaphore. We need we, we need to get out there and start uh, start a semaphore chain the road chain around the world. I mean, it's 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 lain dormant for a long time, but I think that medium is really catching fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that is duckfeed.tv slash souls of darkness. I want to give him give him as many ups as possible because I want that to uh, I want that to exist. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Um, is there anything else before we just kind of get into the body of the episode? Let's do this. Let's do it. So we've got the usual three for you. The brief, the multiplayer, and the grind. And we're going to start with... The brief. The brief, where we talk about things that are happening in the world of video games around us. Uh, looking at the stories here, I'm going to... Uh, Dennis, why don't you go first? Yeah, so on August 26th, which will have happened by the time uh, people are listening to this, uh, YouTube <laughs> <laughs> posted the Slack, man. I posted in the Slack first, so I got, I got official rights. Um, <laughs> YouTube is launching their own uh, gaming site called, um, unimaginatively, I guess, YouTube Gaming. Um, and basically, it's meant to be a Twitch competitor. Uh, where you know you can stream stream live games, but it will also also host um, let's plays, um, and kind of be. I think from what I can tell, their shtick or how they're going to be different is just a better interface and better aggregation of gaming related stuff. Hmm. Um, so Twitch, you know, it's it's not bad. It's just not the best interface 
for searching for games or searching for channels um, or, 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 you know, people even profiles, uh, it's, it's kind of clunky, especially on the mobile app. So while functionally um, on the streaming side, anyway, I don't see YouTube being much different. Um, if they, if they have like a really easy to use interface, I could see it making inroads. Uh, and then of course you have the huge, huge database of let's plays that, uh, that YouTube already has, yeah. um, that'll kind of be mm-hmm. on the same platform. So we'll see how it does. Um, you know, whether, whether people are just comfortable with Twitch and don't really see a, a need to switch or if they, if it's, uh, it's something that they'll go for. Um, but I, the thing I like the best is, um, or was Twitch's response when they, when they started talking about YouTube gaming, <laughs> which was welcome player two hit us up on Google plus. another line extension from google that went so well (laughs) that's uh did you say line extension line extension yes i I wasn't aware of that term (laughs) yeah google has kind of a history of abandoning stuff and i don't know if they're going to be any better at that with alphabet and also boy oh boy like maybe twitch has uh has some of its uh kind of bad stuff uh, to it, but uh, but man, that doesn't have anything on the on the terrible uh, YouTube community. That's true. Yeah, the the community, yeah. at least those who would comment on YouTube, um, is is not best. Well, at the same time, though, a lot of Twitchers already upload all their stuff to YouTube anyway. Yeah. So yep. you know they might get some business from that just because you know, hey, they're already using YouTube for one half of it anyway. So. And you know. counterpoint, Cole, have you ever been on a Twitch stream and seen the chat room for anything that's even moderately well viewed? Uh, no, I've only seen my own stuff and that's been fine. Yeah. So it, it, anything that gets above a thousand listeners and I would, I, I would guess, or a thousand viewers, um, I would guess the threshold is even lower than that just becomes this unreadable wall of constantly cycling yeah. all caps and emoticons text. I don't know if this reveals me as like some kind of elitist, but I would love to have the visible chat, like to to be able to mark certain people as VIPs, to to like to like to make it so that they're going to rise above it. So to like, show up to you or to show up to everyone else, uh, like to show up to like to show up to everybody else. Like if you want to see the good chat, get in here and look at this. There's so there's I know there are plugins. Um, one of them is called Moobot. Um, and I think there is a functionality like that where you can kind of like automatic. I know you can like automatically warn and censor people. So a lot of people use it to like censor profanity in their mm-hmm. feeds. Yeah. Um, so I imagine if you were just prolific enough with that, <laughs> um, you could you could find something kind of effective. The only problem is, you know, unless you're going to set up a unique thing for every single person that logs in, it might be kind of hard to do. Yeah. So I, like, like, like another part of this, like what's going to make a difference here? Like, unless, you know, like, oh, okay. So immediately somebody's going to find a way to stream to both simultaneously. Yeah. Um, but I'm also mm-hmm. wondering like, you know, in terms of the creators, you know, the, like the, like the people who are going to come there, I think they're probably going to gravitate, gravitate towards whichever one has the best monetization. Yeah. You know, or or just the fairest policies. Like I, I don't know what Twitch does for monetization right now. You can get like a pro account and their ads, and you get a like a it's like an affiliate cut off of uh, off of the views and things like that. Whereas YouTube, you know, at least so far, you get a certain rate per thousand views or whatever it is, uh, depending on how many ads you know you, you you choose to put out. I know of more YouTube millionaires, at least the one PewDiePie or whatever, um, than I do of Twitch millionaires. Most mm-hmm. of the money that I know that happens on Twitch is actually from people donating directly to streamers. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that a lot. Yeah. I mean, like we do that for Duckstream too. Like we have that whole infrastructure set up to take the, you know, to take to, to take that, and so that's that's kind of cool. I don't know. Like I'm going to be interested to play around with it. Like if it's a if it's a place where you can take video game related content, not just the live streaming kind of stuff, and put it over into this easy to find place. I just I don't like YouTube's interface anyway. Mm-hmm. And it, so it I don't. Pretty rough. I don't have a lot of faith, and, and neither of them are really winning in that. In, in, in that arena but i think that like discoverability is you know they, they've got a lot to prove to me actually 
Well, just having a rival of some sort, even if they're not that great of a competitor, may cause Twitch to make some, you know, changes slash improvements, you know, Mm -hmm. may trigger some alterations that will better it as a service. True. Yeah. And if it's healthy, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. That's a good question, though. I wonder if just like functionally, if YouTube will have any sort of and I don't know how much you can do this, but any sort of like better performing streams, because I'm constantly fighting low upload. Yeah, so. I think that, that like a, a lot of that is is on the streamer and their ISP too. It's not on the server side. And yeah. in terms of like infrastructure, Twitch is Amazon now, and Amazon is the internet. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Basically. Yeah. Um, Jala, how about your story? So my story is about a game that is being developed by a guy who formerly worked with Rockstar and Ubisoft uh, called Mm. Luis Antonio. And the game is called 12 Minutes. And what it is is basically a real-time 12-minute game that you basically your whole point and purpose is to avoid dying. (laughs) You play a guy whose name is Aaron who's settling into his apartment for the night with his wife and it's currently a playable build uh, on 12minutesgame.com, but it has only placeholder art right now, so don't let that turn you off. It's just he's working on the design elements right at the moment. Basically, uh, the intention of this game is to allow the player to knock through the dominoes of consequential decision-making. That's quote. Hmm. Um, as you replay the game, the character retains knowledge he built from the prior session, sort of like a Groundhog Day thing. Um, as you repeat the same things over and over again, the character Aaron gets better at doing them. And huh. per, the, per the dev, actions that he would initially refuse to do once he realizes there are no consequences, he will be open to try. The game also doesn't give you any specific goals, so like you just have to figure it out on your own. It's kind of like plopping you down and you have to figure out what to do on every 12 minute session. Is there, and, is there something at the end of the 12 minutes that will kill you no matter what? Um, well, until you figure out how to not die. Okay. Yep. Uh, I guess. So <laughs> it's supposedly, uh, it's compact, but it's supposedly not going to be short. The most recent full playthrough of the game took 10 hours, according to Antonio. Mm-hmm. Um, And uh, it's only being made on his nights and weekends around his other dev work, but he hopes to finish it within about a year and then release it on Steam, followed by consoles and tablets. It's, you know, his own indie dev project. Um, Hmm. He says, everything in this game, and I mean everything, has a reason to be there from the layout to the timing, object placement, etc. Sometimes I change a detail that I feel isn't that important, Uh, example being the position of a couch, only to realize that it creates a huge chain of repercussions that I didn't notice. Mm. So, Mm. so like lots of different stuff throughout the whole game is point, you know, in the spots that they're in for reasons and everything has its purpose. And as you go through, you build character knowledge, your character builds knowledge while you also build knowledge alongside it. So I have not played, because I know that's the next question. I have not played the playable build that's up on the website yet. But that's going to be a something that I'm doing before this episode releases. So, I thought you were going to say before this episode is over. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I guess I could actually. I just put you guys on mute and just be like, I'll, I'll give you a twelve guys. minute warning. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Huh. So this is this is an, an, an inter- interesting concept. Like I've seen this in a couple of like IF games, actually, like something that is meant to be kind of like repeated, and your knowledge carries over uh, from uh, from playthrough to playthrough. That is also the twist in certain games we've spoken about recently. Um, <laughs> you know, so the, like that 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 that's pretty powerful. I, I'm I'm wondering kind of like how far this is from being a like like a like a final a final thing. Well, he brought it apparently to PAX East with him, and so there was some kind of booth at PAX PAX East that had this playable for people who were at that convention. So, um, you know, apparently he's pretty well along on it, and he'll do all the finishing touches and stuff within the next year and then release it out on Steam. So So is he doing the art himself, or is he getting other people to do that? Um, it, the article doesn't say, but the article does mention that this particular guy is both a, a dev, like a, you know, game dev himself, but also an artist. 
So I would assume as an artist and as this being his baby project, it didn't mention anybody else working on it with him. So I assume he would do the art himself. But a lot of artwork goes into making a game. So I don't know if that, you know, if he's going to be doing all the 3D modeling, all of the concept art. I, I have no idea offhand. Yeah. And, and so. this could be something like Beyond Eyes or that Dragon Cancer where once people start taking note, he gets the ability to have a more talented team mm -hmm. um, attached mm -hmm. to the project. Yeah. Definitely more reset resources at the very least. I'd be curious with with the idea of hey, like you know, you get into this Groundhog Day and you can try anything. Um, I'm I'm curious to see how well that plays out when you're kind of dealing with the limited verbs that any video game gives you. Um, so you know, no no matter how intricate it is, there's only so many buttons you can press. There's only so many animations you can program mm -hmm. into a game. Well, um, and so I, I wonder if that will feel limiting. I don't know offhand, but I do know that the article goes into talking about, for example, when you come home to your wife, if you sit down and eat dinner with her, that prevents her from doing X thing that, you know, totally changes how stuff plays out from there. So even just do you eat dinner or do you skip dinner, that kind of thing, even just simple stuff like that changes everything in the sequence that follows. Mm. So even yeah. if you have a limited number of verbs, that doesn't necessarily mean that like that limits how many different ways it'll play out, I guess. Yeah. So, so, so it's probably that they, that like that they have in a, her story or like Stanley parable, like way mapped out what each branch is going to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is still cool. Like a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Right. 12, like 12 just minutes a, is a long time. Yeah. It's a yeah. really long time. Well, Especially originally if you're hold the player's attention. Yeah. Well, like, originally he was intending on doing like a whole neighborhood block and then he oh, said God. you know what nope scale down scale down scale down <laughs> yeah one apartment two people this game you needs know? to come out eventually <laughs> mm -hmm. well huh. and then too like it says in the article too so this isn't any kind of a spoiler this is just a flat out thing that happens um that basically what happens is while you're having dinner with your wife or whatever it is that you're doing at that time a cop comes to the door and then accuses your wife of murder and that's that's the main uh, driving force for what happens, you know, through the rest of the 12 minutes that causes you to die. It's not like you suddenly have a heart attack in the middle of dinner. No, this is this is the story beat that causes that. Hmm. So. Huh. So I definitely want to play through that. It sounds like something to keep <laughs> one of your options to let him. Yeah, let him take in your wife and then just quietly eat dinner for the rest of the 12 minutes. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't know. I haven't played it yet, but I will. That's the secret ending. It's the do nothing <laughs> ending. It's like the it's like the secret ending of Far Cry Four. <laughs> uh, so Ben, what's your story? So my original story was going to be about the YouTube Twitch competition. Mm -hmm. uh, so my backup story is that they released a trailer for Metal Gear Solid Five hmm. for next week's release. I have not even seen the trailer yet. That's so. <laughs> it's, it's my secondary story. So I'll just include it. Let's conjecture yeah. about a trailer, guys. <laughs> well, I'm avoiding it. People have so so there there are already reviews out, and there are reviews saying something like "My first 40 hours with Metal Gear Solid 5 or something like that, <laughs> which is fucking okay. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and I've also had people tell me that like there are just all kinds of spoilers out there, and I'm one of these, you know, just madmen who really cares about the Metal Gear Solid story. And so sure. I don't want like cool stuff to be ruined. Yeah, that's where that's where Twitter can be a really dangerous place. Whew, man, I've There's... I've stayed away. Go ahead, John. There are some people in Slack who said that they are retreating away from Twitter and going to Slack so there won't be any spoilers for MGS. <laughs> <laughs> like, because so. like, everybody just be cool. Like just post how wobble gifts. Like it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although Jala, it, it's funny. I have no. I would love to see a chart of my my tweets versus my slacks. <laughs> sure. Um, I, I think there is a very there is like an inverse relationship between the two. Yeah. It's, it's very. <laughs> that's that's scratched an itch that I think I was kind of using Twitter for, but is mm -hmm. not exactly Twitter's wheelhouse. So. <laughs> Well, I was mostly posting links and stuff on the level, but because I was doing so under my own name rather than as the level. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, only the people who were friending me really saw those. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, on Facebook. So 
Mm-hmm. So I, I like I, I pre-ordered my copy of Metal Gear Solid Five. That's something I said I wouldn't do after Batman Arkham uh, City. There we go. What? No, Arkham not City. Arkham Abomination. Uh, what? I, don't I don't know about Arkham, Arkham Origins. Ar- uh, no, Arkham Knight. What? The, what? Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it wasn't <laughs> you know. But Metal Gear Solid Five. I can't see myself not getting that. Same thing with Mario Maker. I was like, okay, I'll just put both these on the same transaction. I'll get them day one. It's gonna be cool. I'll be fine. Mm-hmm. I just, yeah, at that point, it's like you're 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 paying to complete the set, and whether or not it's good, there's value inherent in completing the set. Yeah, that's probably the way I treated Arkham Knight too, honestly. Yeah, <sighs> man, we just the, the 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 ways we justify these things to ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. I've got a story. Um, this is uh, along the lines of uh, just stuff being released on weird platforms. There is a Final Fantasy VII, uh, a version of Final Fantasy VII out on iOS now. And really? Yep. This is crazy because this is something that, you know, a two, wait, no, two years ago. There we go. Oh, my God. <laughs> Time is meaningless. That two years ago, when we talked about Final Fantasy VII on Watch Out for Firewalls, we're like, "Oh, it'd be great! Like, give us, give us Final Fantasy VII on iOS uh, and let us max out the stats." You know, so we so we don't have to fight the battles. Cool, <laughs> and that is that, that 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 is something that they've done. So this is a way for people to um, play that uh, at the at the exorbitant square prices uh, for iOS games. Um, oh. Good. So what? Walk me through why you would max out your stats. Is it just so then you can play through and get the story and like stay on the critical path? Yes, uh, just because like the random battles are a pain in the ass if you have to kind of like slog through them all the time. Whereas if you can just kind of clear the battles immediately, then it becomes a non-issue. At that, at, it, oh, it would be easier to just turn off the random battles, but that is, but that wouldn't uh, that that would also not trivialize the boss fights, which sometimes you need to do for the purpose of the story. Gotcha. And that was going to be my question is, it doesn't maxing out your stats also trivialize the boss fights? Yes. Oh, oh good. So it's really just for the story. Yep. But that's just huh. an option. Like you can, you can huh. approach this just like anything else. So this is kind of funny because, you know, like, uh, again, <laughs> along the lines of, along the lines of Ben's uh, story, I haven't played this and I haven't really looked at anything about it aside from like the, like the launch trailer um, and read a couple of details. But like, you know, this is a game that has, pre-rendered backgrounds right it's mm-hmm, only going mm-hmm. to look so good because they were put out at playstation one resolutions right this isn't going to be upscaled the pc ports of final fantasy 7 and final fantasy 8 don't look that great because they're kind of like these weird interpolated versions of these low res kind of still still images um with the kind of garage shaded characters put over top of them um and they're going around and doing their thing i think the battle sequences look okay at least in the pc version but uh but yeah like i i can't imagine what that chunkety ass background would look like on a retina screen yeah that's tough yeah and 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 i still have one small comment to make along the final fantasy 7 lines go ahead Team Four Star, the people who did the parody Dragon Ball Z abridged and also Yu-Gi-Oh abridged, etc., are doing Final Fantasy VII abridged. Oh yeah, they <laughs> just released a trailer for that, and so people who like the idea of learning about the story and want to see something funny, or people who already have played it and want to see something, you know, entertaining. Well, there you go. Hmm. Like Team Four Star is cool. I like them anyway, and oh. so it will be entertaining to watch that. I am definitely going to be watching. Hmm. Like I mean, the, the, like they voice it, right? Like they'll yeah, talk, they'll, they dub over it and then they make it. it. Yeah, they, they summarize it. They really do, but they mm-hmm. summarize it in a very funny, you know, parody type way. Yeah, and you know, make fun of stuff that you know is ridiculous and so on. So it, it is to video game plots what like uh, Stephen Colbert is to the news. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> or what Auto Tune the News is to the news. <laughs> <laughs> multiplayer now it is time for the multiplayer where we talk about um your responses to a question that we ask you boy i messed that up but uh there, there, there's no there's no stopping <laughs> this train there. once it leaves the station uh, mm-hmm. dennis you were kind enough to put this question out uh to the masses and uh let's see here why don't you let the nice people know uh what the topic of discussion is for today yeah, so I, I put it out to the masses, but it is actually the brainchild of uh, Graham Markison. Mm. 
who posted yeah. it on the Slack. So uh, he he asked, um, "What poorly received game are you a, an apologist for?" <laughs> so where where do you think the critics got, or, or general opinion got it wrong? And I will begin with Graham's response to his own question, saying, um, I've become such a defender of Final Fantasy XIII that I've started to carry around a business card. Granted, <laughs> I don't think the game is great. It's definitely flawed. Uh, but there are many criticisms of FF13 that I don't think stick. My main, apologism, my main apologism points include, it's okay for a game to be really, really linear. That's point A. Point two, allocating multi, uh, sorry, allocating player control over a squad of fighters instead of controlling each character individually was a good design decision. Uh, point Delta, uh, some of the characters <laughs> are pretty cool. And point four, the music is pretty great. <laughs> yeah, I agree with the first two. Actually, I, I, I think that the, uh, the the linearity is not that huge of a problem. And uh, those uh, the, 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 the squad kind of stuff is you know a, a good decision ben what does tanner say tanner says silent hill 4 is criminally underrated even by the quote unquote true silent hill fans i've never understood the hate for clarification true is being used to describe the core games not elitist fans i like silent hill 4 a lot <laughs> it's good i really do it's it's so weird and like you know i like stuff that is off-puttingly weird like that in you know just intentionally doesn't want you to like it the fact that it is <laughs> like you know like one half of it's the game and then the other half of it's the game again but it's an escort mission mm -hmm. it's it's such a it's such a departure i can see where people would say like oh this one of these things is not like the other but like if there there's still enough to recommend it yeah, I think that's where a lot of the hate comes from, is that it's a different kind of format as the previous three games. Yeah. Also, it's not as dark and it's not as like scary and gory. Like there's no real nightmare, mm -hmm. uh, 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 nightmare misty world kind of kind of split. Like everything is kind of the nightmare world. But the, man, the stuff it does with the apartment. Mm -hmm. Ugh. <laughs> Jala, what's Connor say? Connor says Silent Hill 4 initially irked me for never actually going to Silent Hill, but how goddamn scary, atmospheric, original, and compelling it was won me over. I didn't realize the gaming community thought so ill about it. Yeah, it's 4 is where people tend to say the, the, the series done fall off. Yeah. You know, like through like three, like there, there was never really a team silent, like outside of the people who made Silent Hill 1. Um, they, you know, a couple of them were, were around for Silent Hill, uh, two, and then three was, you know, it had a lot of like the, the, the main kind of creative directors behind it. But, uh, I think that a lot of people are kind of yearning for days that were not really there. <laughs> sure. Yeah. But that's, that's just me. And why don't we go for the Silent Hill hat trick? Ben, what does Amanda say? <laughs> or, or, or no, Dennis, what does Amanda say? Uh, Amanda says, I'm definitely an apologist for Sh Silent Hill Shattered Memories. The game is not perfect, but I remember playing through it with friends in college one afternoon and how fun and scary it was, though not on the level of Amnesia or other such games. Have any of you played that game? Shattered Amnesia? Memories? Oh, Shattered no. Memories, no. Is that, I think you might have, someone lent me that game on Xbox One right before uh, Money Smith's, uh, uh, and, well, our apartment got broken into. Yeah. No, I lent you uh, Silent Hill Homecoming actually, and that oh, that was on Xbox sure. 360. Um, and I still I, I still need to like get another copy of that game. Not that I'm angry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ben, Shatter you, Memories was Wii only. I've played it twice, right? Yeah, but, yeah. You played you played it through. It was also on PSP and PS2, but it was kind of a diminished okay. version. Yeah, I, I don't I don't think that there are many people who actually take a shit on Shatter Memories. Actually, I, I need to go back and take a look at like Metacritic. I think that's because no one played it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's our little secret. But yeah, I, I, again, it kind of falls into that same in, into that same complaint. It's not like the others, so therefore, uh, I don't know. It's it's one of those things where the it's it's the it's the most hardcore fans who are going to rip it rip, rip it to shreds. Hmm. Yeah. Um, Gary writes in saying Deus Ex 2 is not nearly as bad as people make it out to be and has its problems, almost all of which are resultant of the console port. Uh, but if you look around those problems, there are plenty of bright spots. The entire Cairo chapter, the sentient entertainment hologram who turns out to be a spy, the weapon upgrades are all pretty neat. 
Uh, it's also in canon, uh, but they'll never do a sequel because of how poorly it performed. Instead, we're stuck in this golden limbo between Deus Ex 1 and Deus Ex 2. It's a fun place to be, but I want to see what happens to humanity. I never played Deus Ex 2. <laughs> I only Sounds like you should. One. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's one of those things. Like I, I don't know if we're go- if uh, if I'm going to play it unless we do it for or watch out for fireballs. Hmm. And even then, it's uh like I I, I understand like it's kind of a bitch to run. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Why so? Oh, just like modern systems. I I haven't tried running it, so I could just be talking out of my ass. In fact, people are people are probably like screaming at their <laughs> at their at their iPods. Hmm. <laughs> uh let's see ben what does kilo say kilo says final fantasy crystal chronicles i know a lot of people who thought it was a uh, cash grab for game boy advances and link cables but i thought the world enticing and the structure unique it was one of the first games i played where i started to understand the power of indirect storytelling that's intriguing yeah hmm i never played it but then again i never owned a gamecube I think the only like the the only game like that I played was like Legend of Zelda: Link's Four Swords Adventures or whatever. GameCube or Game Boy Advance? Um, it was okay. So it was kind of a precursor to the Wii U. You had it was it was it was a GameCube game, um, and you could play it with up to four people. But you had to use a special cable that connected from your Game Boy Advance to your GameCube to use your Game Boy Advance as a controller. Um, so you could have like a back and forth between what was on the big screen and what was on the screen in your hands. Hmm. Yeah, it was like it, it was a, it was a nightmare, and it definitely it definitely did read as a uh, as a little bit of a cash grab. But um, like indirect storytelling, like that's not something Final Fantasy does very much. So now I'm <laughs> curious, um, I, I, uh, Kilo, if you can if you can uh, go, go 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 into a little bit more detail about that, I would really appreciate it. Um, Jala, what does David say? David says alpha protocol, but that's been talked to death on duck feed. So <laughs> I'll say near it's a game with a great, albeit slightly loopy story and amazing music that's held back by repetitive ga- combat and unfortunately hollow magic system. Lots of spells, but few are useful. Still an amazing game. That's worth a play. Yeah. I played a little bit of it, but I didn't keep going, <laughs> you know, because life. Because yeah. you switched to The Witcher 3? <laughs> no, no, because I switched to August being a crazy fucking month for everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, Dennis, what does Phil say? Phil says, They're not really well received in the West, but I'm a big fan of the romance of the Three Kingdoms strategy games. I like the time period, and a lot of its ideas were used in other grand strategy games. I'd wish they'd start bringing them over again. Hmm. They stopped in like the PS2 era, right? I, I'm not familiar with these. It's it's funny because it, I think it's a little bit like Crusader Kings, actually. Like when he's talking about grand strategy games, I, th- I think that that might be what he's referring to. But like Romance of the Three Kingdoms, it's just these very technical, like large scale nation building and army management strategy games that are based in uh, China, like medieval China. Um, around the time where they had like the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom and the eastern kingdom like all of those sure. and like that is the basis for like a bunch of literature and a bunch of uh you know just like history that i'm like super fascinated by but have never found an inroad to yep. yeah um let's see franz says um it's been a while since i played the alpha protocol card so here goes alpha <laughs> protocol a great spy rpg with a story that really adapts to your play style and decisions a lot of people seem to hate it because the shooter parts are a bit clunky and of course you play a dialogue driven mystery thriller for the shock for the shooting bits um, he says <laughs> sarcastically um I, I didn't really intone that correctly but continuing uh but i can't i really can't understand why that is such a deal breaker mm, but maybe it's just me i'm also the only one who loves the hacking mini game <laughs> that hacking mini game geez but ben can you offer a defense for the hacking mini game so i'm trying to think there there's three different mini games there's the hacking one is the one where they have different letters and you're trying to find the constant word right and yes. it shuffles it around yeah okay yeah, I liked it. I'm fine with it. I just and, uh, my eyes don't work that way. And they also had 
the two different lock picking games, right? They had or they had the computer game where you had to pick the circuits, and then you had the lock pick game where you had to like gently press the trigger. Right? Yeah, yeah. It was just like you had to you had to find the right pressure to, yeah. to to hold it at. I didn't mind the circuit one because my eyes work like that, but just the constantly shifting letters, it really uh it felt like I was looking for a redhead of the matrix. Sure. Uh. Is don't those stand out? Uh, maybe, and, and it's it's like I was looking for a bad analogy in a in a podcast. <laughs> it's like I was looking for sunglasses in the Matrix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, the, the best camouflage of all. Mm-hmm. Camouflage for your eyes. <laughs> oh man. Um, let's see here, Jala, or no, this is going to be Ben. I've got the order all messed up. Um, so Ben, what does Roop say? <laughs> It says Assassin's Creed Unity. The gameplay itself was shitty and <laughs> <laughs> good. Good opener. strong start. Strong start. Yeah. And crashes happened all the time. But even better. Uh, but all the codex text and all the other extra text gave much information about uh, Abstergo and other test subjects. It also seems that I'm the only one who's interested about Desmond and all the other things in the modern days and outside of the Animus. Yeah. Yeah. Out, out, again, outside of the Matrix, all that stuff. <laughs> it's it's cool. It just that series kind of hit way too much, uh, way too much of uh, uh, the same note. Yeah, which is it's it's interesting. I I'll be curious to see if they can ever shake that. Like regardless of how much um, they actually do improve or change or innovate, the the series has kind of been hit with that moniker for people who got burnt out on it and mm-hmm. saw it as samey. Um, and honestly, I couldn't answer the question of what would get you to come back and try an Assassin's Creed game. I'm going to uh, say that if you put out a game every year, it's going to be pretty similar to the one that came out a year before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just make us miss it, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, really hard to get. Leave something to the imagination. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I so we're, we're about a decade into this into this series. We're 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 two years away from it being ten years. I, I'm kind of wondering when there's going to be like a reboot or a back to basics kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, and and God, if they could do the first one again, but actually have a game <laughs> instead of just interesting mechanics, that that you know, it's worth the reboot. <laughs> they just need to pair up with the Hitman Studio and be like, here, you take all the assassin missions. We'll do everything else in the, the environment <laughs> and the history. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Great, create like the traveling Woolbury of games. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Um, Jala, what does Steven say? Steven says, along with Gary and Cole, I'm constantly defending Dark Souls 2 and its value to the series, but lest we speak of that game too much here, I'll <laughs> say that I thoroughly enjoyed Metal Gear Solid 4. From what I remember, it was critically praised for the most part, but all of my friends at the time said it was boring and stupid. So I borrowed it from a friend and embarked on my very first Metal Gear experience, and I loved every minute of it. I realized, without having played any of the other entries in the series, that this was to be the climactic chapter in a long-spanning saga, so the abundant cutscenes felt necessary and the story was compelling enough to bring me through, even though I had no idea who anybody was. Pro tip! Don't set out to finish the game at midnight on a Tuesday night before work. That last two-hour cutscene was brutal. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> I, I remember having to pause to it, pause it, go to class, and then come back and finish it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Final cutscene of your game is a movie. It is yeah. you know, the length of a movie. Uh, you got problems, or your Metal, metal Gear. Yeah. It, it, well, if I ended, if I ever end up doing that streaming series of Metal Gear, like I can't wait to get to four because it's the one of the, it's the one, it's the entry in the series I've played the least. I mean, it's like a Cyberpunk Peace Walker, which I haven't really, you know, delved into too much, um, aside from being able to figure out that, like, oh, I, I like this game. Um, but yeah, like I rented a PS3 to play Metal Gear Solid Four. Oh, I didn't I know that. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was like I like I I want to see the end of this or what I feel like is the end of it, you know? And and yeah, like I think I beat it over the course of like 3 days. <laughs> That's wow. incredible. I yeah. I have not played it yet. I've played the other Metal Gears before it and I also played Ground Zeroes, which I'll talk about in my multi or my uh grind, but yeah. I have not played four because I only just recently got a PS3. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I have it now. It's sitting there, but other things have distracted me from playing it yet, yeah. but I will get to it, and then I will get to five when that's out. 
it's so. it's one of those things, right? Because I don't think that its reputation is ill deserved. And for as much as I kind of enjoy its excesses, or at least my memory of its excesses, like a game gets a bad rap from people saying, "No, stay away from that." Like if if I can't honestly recommend a game, it's hard for me to say like that its reputation is is ill deserved because there are lots of other people who are kind of like less equivocative about telling people to stay away from something that is potentially mediocre right mm-hmm. hmm let's see dennis what does josh say or sorry no what does ollie's uh ollie say there we go yeah um ollie says one game kept coming back to my mind a game few people played and was panned by a lot of critics as a style over substance and too different to really enjoy uh, and that the game was a mismatch of unsuited themes I talk, of course, of the criminally underrated 13, uh, not to be confused with Final Fantasy 13. Mm. Uh, this little masterpiece was made by the lovely people at Ubisoft Paris before microtransactions uh, and on-disc DLC made them seem evil and was a magnificent blend of FPS and stealth action. To cap it all off, it featured the most alluring cel-shaded graphics. Uh, they really did look like the comic the game was based on. Due to the mediocre reviews, the game did not sell well, and a planned sequel was shelved. It's a, a shame to say, uh, excuse me, it's a shame as to this day, it's still one of my favorite games and something I heartily recommend to everyone. As an extra bonus, the game Black by Criterion Games also received poor enough reviews, but is right up there with Call of Duty 4 in my eyes of in terms of modern FPS games. Wow, I really sound like an FPS guy when I'm anything but. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember paying a lot of attention to black and then being scared off of it by reviews but black, it looked like a game that would be really cool black is really fun i, I remember liking it a lot like it it, fe- it feels a lot like fear to me it, it's, it's high it, praise in 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 so far as like what they were able to do visually and made the made the gunfights feel really good um i'm not sure if they actually were any good but it was an experience yeah that kind of makes me want to go back and try it yeah and the game that you can shoot down a building in the first mission is usually pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did not know that was possible. Mm-hmm. That's this awesome. Game keeps on rising in my book. <laughs> but I don't think you can play it. Like I think you have to have a, like you have to get like an original copy of it because of backward compatibility stuff. Uh, it, was it on PS2? Yeah, it was on PS2, Xbox. Um, Thirteen was one of those. Uh, it, it was it was like an Xbox launch title or like Xbox and GameCube, and that was one of the first games that I can remember that really did that really did cell shading. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hmm. I believe didn't David Duchovny do a voice in it as well? Oh, maybe. I don't know. That might be true. <laughs> I could I could believe it at the very least. No, you might be thinking of uh, no David Duchovny voiced the gray alien in like Area Fifty One Black Site, mm. something like that. It was it was it was something really on the nose. Uh, let's see. Josh writes in saying, "Hide lied for the NES, much hated, uh, but what other game taught so many children the value of making wise purchasing decisions?" <laughs> I don't think you're making a good case, Josh. <laughs> um and let's see here ben let's round everything out with chris chris says uh amnesia a machine for pigs i'm not sure how it was reviewed critically but it seems very mixed by people i personally still love the experience i'm perfectly okay with uh an amnesia light every now and then with its absence of the dwindling inventory and horror sanity meter uh the story is kind of a mess but i dug the journey I really enjoyed the Chinese room talking a step away from emotionally walking from emotional walking sim to a hiding in the shadows sim. <laughs> ah. uh, and I thought the entire opening up to and including the church was amazing. I really love the setting and I would love for the Chinese room to do another horror adventure game in the future. Yeah. I don't know what they're doing after Rapture, honestly. Yeah, they, I mean, they, that's kind of. They, I'm sure they're already thinking about the next thing, but I would like to think that they can kind of take a second and enjoy um, the the moderate success that they're having. Yeah. Hmm. So yeah, let's uh, let's go through ours real quick, Jolly. I want to hear uh, which uh, which maligned game you really like. Well, I had to think about it, and then it was really apparent to me, all in one very simple swoop, 
<laughs> Resident Evil 6. Hmm. <laughs> duh. Ooh. Like, duh. Because I, and it's not that, like, okay, overall, people who play that game generally enjoy it on some level. They just don't like it as a Resident Evil game. But I don't mind the fact that it's in the series and that it changes up. Like, it, it continues along that. Let's make it an action game with monster things. Like, I, I don't care. That's fine. I don't have a problem with that being a thing, and I kind of wish that they would just kind of branch off and do two different lines of Resi Evil, you know, like have the action-y type stuff and keep going with the story that they're going in in 6 and like have zombies on the moon or whatever other insanity they would have to do next to like top what they did in 6. Um, and then like, you know, the stuff they're actually doing, which is trying to go back to the original horror elements and things. So, but... I enjoyed it. It's fun. Yeah, I don't care that it's ridiculous. It's Resident Evil. Like, what would about you, it? Would you have enjoyed it as much if you could not play it co-op? Um, not nearly as much. The main thing that I like about it is playing through a co-op. So, you know, without that co-op element, I'm not nearly as interested in the game. It's still fun. But it wouldn't be as fun if you weren't able to watch some of this crazy action movie stuff happening with somebody else on the line with you going, oh my god, I guess couch couch, couch co-op, if you will, like somebody just mm-hmm. sitting next to you, and even if it's single player, just witnessing it while you're doing it and laughing with you, that would be okay too, but, you know, generally speaking, when I'm playing on my PC, I'm playing in a room alone with people on the internet, so. Sure. Yeah. So. That's a pretty good one. Um, Dennis, how about you? I get to talk about Metrico again. <laughs> <laughs> that's the uh, that's the post image for this one too. This is yeah. This is my own personal dead horse that I will just keep on beating. <laughs> uh, that game is amazing, and I was so infuriated that no one could see past it doesn't control like a standard platformer. Mm-hmm. Uh, like the the entirety of that game was, and I could see how people read it as gimmicky you know, playing with all the different inputs that you could have on the Vita. But the fact that it tied it together under a theme and and just a really strong idea and thesis that the entire game supported so well. Like, it was just such a cohesive unit that it's just baffling to me that people would play something like that and then go, oh, I don't like the controls. Like... There's so much more to it than that, and um, and anyone who who's gotten it free through PlayStation Plus and hasn't had a chance, especially because I know there are some of you listening who have Vitas now who didn't before, go play <laughs> Metro. Um, it's it is phenomenal and and honestly just one of my favorite gaming experiences. Period. Uh, much you know, set aside anything about an underrated game. Hmm. Yeah, Ben, how about you? All right, so I got two, but also (laughs) I I looked up Voices of 13. So not only is David Duchovny in it, but Adam West does a voice in it as well. Oh, my God. (laughs) Oh, no. All right, so the two games that I got, uh, an old one is The World is Not Enough, the James Bond game. I don't know if it was critically panned or not, but it it had a solid multiplayer to it, but I I don't remember many people playing it because it kind of came out towards the end of the, the N64 life cycle. But, uh, yeah, that was a fun game. And then the other one that I have is Alpha Protocol, of course. So somebody yeah. needed to mention it. But uh, I feel like the only reason that game got panned is because people were expecting it to be a first-person shooter when, really, it's a choose-your-own-adventure spy game. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I, I cannot sing the praises of Alpha Protocol enough. And this that, that's one of those games that uh, I don't think their archives go back that far. But, like... I was very much in the wrong about my first impression on it. <laughs> like I, I, I brush it off for all the reasons that people brush it off. That and Dark Souls, funny enough. <laughs> that one is uh, still available. That episode is still <laughs> out there. So, so yeah, <laughs> that's fun. Dramatic irony. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never gonna play this game again. <laughs> <laughs> um, Silent Hill Four would have honestly been my answer. Um, I like just that, that, that game is one of the games in the series. I just like constantly think about going back to because it is so weird and I don't know, like just like thematically resonant for me. Um, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to instead, um, say Kingsfield, the ancient city. Uh Yeah. So this is, 
you, you know, from software before they, you know, hit Demon Souls and Dark Souls and, you know, just to lay, like Kingsfield is the, is, is the, was their medieval action role playing series before that. We covered it on a Bonfire Side chat. And I never would have played this if it weren't for the show. And it's a little bit of an oddball for, from the series. But, you know, like it, it's from that weird period of early PS2 games where people were just kind of like, eh, meh. Like I'm looking at Metacritic right now and it's got like a like a 60 or something, which is, mm-hmm. you know, not that great, you know, in general. But, man, is it just so atmospheric and just haunting and good. And I realize that last one's just a little bit generic to say <laughs> it's good. Uh, but uh, like, I think that that is a game whose stock just kind of rises because it's, you know, it, it doesn't have the kind of weird low res, weird warping 3D problems that like the PS1 games had. So like it actually puts together a really cohesive world. The soundtrack is phenomenal. And like I feel like if once you get over kind of the, the floatiness of the of the controls and the fact that if you don't set the options just right, you're going to get motion sick. Um, yeah, it's, it's just like, it, it, it plays a little bit like a first person precursor to, uh, to dark souls. And that is remarkable. So do you think you were able to enjoy it in part because of dark souls? Like, yes. do you think, okay, yeah, <laughs> that, that, that kind of paved the way for you to be able to pick up what they were laying down in the previous games. Yeah. And, and you know, just like, I, I've spilled enough, uh, voice ink about, about this, but you know, the, 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 there are a couple of things that, you know, that are in this vein that I've been able to go back to with a new appreciation. And I'm not going to say something as broad as like, Oh, dark souls taught me patience, but mm-hmm. dark souls taught me to have patience in looking for certain kinds of things in games that are like dark souls. Yeah. Also, because we've had so many callbacks to previously talked about games in this multiplayer, <laughs> uh, I'm going to recommend Voice Inc. as a uh, as a potential title. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's pretty good. I'm going to write it down. Enough, voice Inc. <laughs> so thank <laughs> thank you everybody for uh, for writing in. This is a this is a great question. Thank you, Graham, for uh, recommending this. Uh, there are plenty of ways to recommend questions, but there's uh, kind of one main way that we have to you know have you answer them, and that is through. Um, you know, the Facebook group that is facebook.com slash the level podcast. And thank you, Dennis, for putting that up. Yeah, my pleasure. Yep. Those go out on Tuesday afternoons. The grind. Now it is time. Now it is time for the grind where we talk about the games we've been playing over the past period of time or so. Jala, uh, since you've been away for a little bit, why don't you uh, get us started? I'm full of things. Okay. So okay cool. The, like, the like, like blood and stuff. <laughs> You're wax. And- yeah. Well, in this case, I am full of bread because one of the first things that I played is I am bread. So I must first say that it is extremely difficult to be bread. I think people <laughs> underestimate the difficulty. Um, it's it's a game that is made by the people who made Surgeon Simulator, at least according to a slacker. I do not remember which. I am sorry. Um, somebody said it was made by the people who made Surgeon Simulator, which makes sense because it's very difficult to do. <laughs> um, it is physics-based. Your goal in life is to be the perfect toast. Perfectly 100% toasted, not over or underdone on either side. Um, and if you get ants or other types of food on you or something like that, you have an edibility meter that goes down. Like if you drop on the floor, it goes down really fast. Uh, After five you know, seconds, of course. Yeah. And so like, yeah, you, you literally have a few seconds before it'll start going down all the way. Um, anyway, you can basically stick to anything and kind of like when you play Mount Your Friends, you have a button assigned to each corner and you can also adhere to stuff and stick to it and like flop your way up you know the side of a countertop or something if you want um it took me a long time to learn the controls because it always takes me a long time to learn controls um but then i finally got i I started the first level in the kitchen i got to the toaster i was on top of the toaster and i couldn't get into the slot and then when i was (laughs) trying to like throw myself into the toaster i overshot and fell into the kitty litter and died (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so I tried a new tactic, and this time I went on the skateboard over to <laughs> the <laughs> the oven, and I got on a burner, and then I flipped myself over, and I became toast on the stove. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 you're improvising. 
Yes, I was improv. There are many ways to become toast, Cole. Do not be so so square. <laughs> so how, how how do you how do you know that you've won? Like, what is you just get you like get a hundred percent toasted? You get a hundred percent toasted on either side and remain edible. <laughs> ah, I see. And that's how you win the level, and then it like moves on to the next level. I have not progressed. Oh, it's multiple that. levels. Okay, it's levels, and apparently there's some incorporation now with Team Fortress Two. Oh, <laughs> I. Oh, yeah. because of the so, sandwich thing. Yeah. So, huh. so yeah, that's the thing. I have not gotten further than the first level because it took me a long time to be a piece of bread and to become a piece of toast. And yes, you know that question that we asked a while ago at my uh, urging about eating food. This game made me want to go make toast, and I did. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's a thing that happened in life. So that was my first game. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> How's the soundtrack? Uh, I don't remember it no. if there was much of a soundtrack. So I, I know, oh no, there is a soundtrack. I know there's music in it, but I don't think it's like, you know, super riveting or anything. Mm. I just, I, I heard that if you get to the credits, there's an awesome single by the Yeasty Boys. <laughs> I heard the quality wasn't good, that it was kind of grainy. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're glutens for punishment. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. We continue, Jala. <laughs> I'm just going to move on now. Okay, I'm so the pretend next that didn't I... happen. <laughs> you can turn off next... Murphy's Law on the options. <laughs> turn, turn on what? I'm sorry. So you can turn off Murphy's Law on the options. Of what? That states if uh, if you drop a piece of toast, it will always land butter side down. Oh, okay, yeah. This is... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I am I am familiar with a with a similar but more broad definition of Murphy's Law. Yeah, I think I'm almost certain that's where Murphy's Law uh, originated. I thought I thought it was uh, like in the military. Maybe. Yeah, it was like if, if if something can go wrong, it will go wrong. Had to do with like like uh, engineering planes and stuff like that. I mean, the way I learned about Murphy's Law was very toast centric. So mm, okay. <laughs> 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 facts i didn't know about dennis okay yeah. so uh, <laughs> moving on metal gear solid ground zeros uh i spent three hours in this game mm. although if i'd actually stuck to the mission it would have just taken an hour the thing about me and in, in any kind of game like this particularly i've discovered that i have a 75 chance percent chance of actually like sneaking in any given i let's call it like a dnd round if you will mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and uh the other 25 percent involves any kind of awol activity like you know i'm gonna follow behind the guards and see how long i can do it before they notice me or i'm going to go up to that thing over there and i'm going to crawl on this thing can i get in there that place and whatever or or just randomly attacking people like i, I do this kind of thing all the time so <laughs> like i i just make my own fun whenever I, I get into a game like this and so i might sneak but a one in four chance of doing something random is a pretty high chance given the fact that we're talking <laughs> like a round <laughs> you know yeah so um that's why it takes me so long so I was playing it straight for a while, and I was behaving, and I got to the first guy that you needed to get to, to like, to go rescue, and then I hopped into the chopper, because I thought that if there was a chopper, <laughs> yeah. I was supposed to be in it. Nope. And, <laughs> and that ended the mission in failure, so... <laughs> you love so pause. Then, and so, so after, yeah, and so I thought they were going to, like, drop me off closer to where I was supposed to be going. No, I was not supposed <laughs> to be on the chopper, so... <laughs> Nope. Whatever. I mean, like the, the icon was like flashing at the chopper, like that's where mm -hmm. I need to be. So anyway, um, after that, after I played it straight, and that was my reward for for doing that, <laughs> I decided that I was going to uh, hop into the giant tank, and I popped in unseen, and nobody thought it was weird. And then I just started shooting fools, and then I ended up triggering. I found out that they have like infinite reinforcements, apparently, <laughs> and and so. Um, you know, I was bla blasting anti-aircraft guns, a bunch of dudes. I went on a killing spree, and then I ran from everybody, and then I got out of bounds, and then I gamed over because I was out of bounds. No fair. <laughs> so, so anyway. <laughs> that's just animate everything for an entire yeah. world? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm all about my, like, let me go do things, and so... Anyway, I was I was having fun doing all of this kind of mayhem, and and I did eventually finish it. Yes, like I, I did calm down after my tank bit, uh, and actually finish the game. But 
one one um, one comment and uh i'm just going to say it is not a spoiler because if you don't know the things blow up in a metal gear game yeah. i can't help you <laughs> but that bomb though what the fuck like if you played it you know what i'm talking about yeah i'm not, i <laughs> i don't i don't i don't know if 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 the i don't know if they earned that <laughs> yeah <sighs> Well, anyway, so so that was the second thing I played, and mm-hmm. since Cole's already talked about it, I don't think there's <laughs> anything else to say about that. I so. have a question about it. Okay, is it worth buying and playing now, or is it better just to wait a week and play the actual game? Uh, it's oh good. hell no, it's fun to play. Yeah, it's gonna so. come. I believe it's gonna. It, it comes with a with a with a uh, Phantom Pain. Oh, oh okay. okay. Yeah. Well, then never mind. Inconsequential. Mm-hmm. Play it anyway. It's fun. Yeah, and if it doesn't, I'll send you my physical copy because I got it free on PS Plus, but I have a I have a disc of it. Neener, neener, neener. <laughs> anyway, okay. So um, the last thing I played is Dark Souls. <laughs> You're kidding me. No, yeah, nobody, nobody's I played, played Dark Souls. Dark Souls. I was okay. Here's what happened. I was trying to figure out what game I wanted to play next, and I was debating if I wanted to go and play Last of Us because Allison was so kind as to send it to me, or if I wanted to play Metal Gear Solid 4, or if I wanted to play Spec Ops The Line because of Cole, and then I was like, you know, I'm just going to go in a totally random direction as I do, and so I'm going to play Dark Souls. So, Mm -hmm. ta-da. Choose the sixth way. (laughs) <laughs> that, well that's 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 what i do so um first comment fire bombs are a girl's best friend <laughs> except um, when they're least, being used on you yeah well um at least the way that i've been playing because um let me first say that i tend to play mages or spell sword bard type people uh light or medium armor quick moving um you know projectiles and stuff that's usually what I play in if you give me the option and if it's a viable option, I will play a ranged character. And if I can't play like a sorcerer, I will opt for a ranger. Or if I can't do that, I'll do a thief. Like I don't do tanks very often. So yeah. when I was trying to do this, uh, both you, Cole, and Gary said, hey, you should do a pyromancer then. And I rolled a pyromancer, but uh, listener Tanner had also suggested a sorcerer. So I rolled both of them. I played a little bit with each of them. Um, I only just got to like Firelink and then was like, you know, I actually really like the specificity of the sorcerer's spells. So I'm just going to roll with that one. It was only later on that I actually wandered down below Firelink and found the dude that sells the spells. And if I knew that was there, I probably would have rolled with the Pyromancer instead. Mm hmm. But uh, I didn't know that was there, so I just, you know, picked the one that seemed to have the stuff that I wanted. So, yeah. whatever. Um, so, I play this kind of like a cross between how I play Skyrim and Guild, Guild Wars 2. And how I, what I mean by that is, in Guild Wars 2, I was an elementalist with a lot of movement assisting, assisting spells and dodge rolled, and, and I flitted all over the place. In that game, I don't have much in the way of a close range attack at all, so I'm constantly playing keep away by virtue of the game mechanics for that class. In Skyrim, though, I had a light sword and would aggro with spells and archery and then finish guys off with my sword if they live long enough to get close. So in Dark Souls, I tend to play keep away as much as possible and try to gauge enemy power by how much damage my ranged attacks do. And if they don't do much, I mark that enemy as somebody that I need to like stay the hell away from for a while <laughs> and plot <laughs> out where I and how I can kill it before it reaches me. Um, I've had a lot of fun just, like, finding the Black Knights and, and other very strong things, coming up against them, and then just, like, finding a place they can't get to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I've had a lot of fun doing that, because that actually is a lot of fun for me to have to run away from them, knowing that they could kill me in, like, two hits, and, like, being like, ha ha, I got you, sucker. And, you and, know? And, and your instinct is right, because so much of that game, especially early on, is managing the space that you're fighting people in. And like learning your learning your weapon and just kind of like figuring out how to do as much damage to them without taking damage yourself. That sounds super basic and banal as I say it. And so I'm going to back away from it very quickly. But like <laughs> you, you, your instinct is right. Well, it's kind of like 
Uh, I've started listening to Bonfire Side Chat finally because I was keeping myself on blackout from the game because I knew eventually I'd be playing it. So I've been listening to the episodes after I finished that area just to see what I've missed or whatever. And it's funny because, um, like, between that and then in talking to you too, Cole, like, you guys are like, sorcery is the easy button, but I kind of always tend to play a sniper or a mage or whatever Mm -hmm. and de-emphasize melee if range is actually viable. So, like, for me, I don't understand why, for example, okay, you guys had problems with the prowling demon, you know, that guy. I fought that guy, and what happened for me? Okay, the first time I I rolled down that stairway, he ganked me like lightning i died and i laughed my ass off then the second time after i went down there um i like ran behind stuff shot him with magic ran up to him hit him a few times and then ran past him to the doorway and then sniped his ass from a place he couldn't get me because i was like nope fuck you you're dead so i'm like that's that just makes sense. Like, I play this as if I were in this situation. I wouldn't want to be next to that thing. I wouldn't <laughs> want to be. At, no, I'd be like in the doorway, like, you can't get me from over here, sucker. You're dead now. So that's how I play. And so, yeah. like, um, you guys also had mentioned when you got to the Undead Parish, you know, oh, this this part's so hard. But, like, when I got to that the church area... I shot all the individual guys one by one, drawing them out at, you know, aggroing one by one with, you know, archery and then just, you know, took them each out individually. Mm -hmm. I also did the same thing for the Black Knight, but I didn't walk in through the front door because there's a shiny and there's a lot of knights and stuff in there. It's obviously a bad idea to do that. So I went around the side, killed all the little weaklings on the side and then walked in through the side door, noticed the channeler trying to, you know, gank me from up high. Then I hid behind a pillar, shot his ass, killed him, then went up mm-hmm. there and found all the, the guys that apparently get, you know, buffed if you go up there right away and try to, you know, melee him. I'm like, I didn't have any problems with that area because I'm playing, you know, very cautiously, you know, yeah. walking around the side like, oh, hell no. I'm playing this like it's a D&D game. I'm not going to go in the front door. Are you yeah. kidding me? Yeah. You know? and, it's, and so when, when we say that range stuff, especially spells, are, are, are easy mode is specifically because of that. Um, mm-hmm. there are going to be times where that strategy is going to fail you. Oh, like, I know. They're, like they're, 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 they're setting you up for that. And when, like, you know, and, and so, and so when, when people who are, are familiar with the game encourage you for that, it's almost like, uh, uh to telling you to, to eat your vegetables a little bit because mm-hmm. lear, 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 learning to, lear, learning to roll or learning to dodge or learning to kind of like get up, uh, you know, get, get, get up in the fray is only going to benefit you later. Um, oh, I know. As, I- yeah. I spent a lot of time in the Undead Burg just over and over and over again going through and fighting all the enemies melee style just mm-hmm. so that I could get used to each of them. And every single time I encounter a new enemy, don't get me wrong, yes, mm-hmm. I do snipe them from afar, but I also yeah. take time to generally you know, go up to them and fight them one-on-one once I know where there's a bonfire so I can figure out melee-wise how I can deal with them and whatever so at this point i'm actually at the uh like where i stopped off is i walk through the white light which is never a good idea to go into a white light (laughs) in this game and then uh i like i walked in there i got attacked by dogs and then the copper demon smushed me and i died and i'm like (laughs) oh well i see a stairway back there i know where i'm gonna be going when i fight this guy (laughs) and and how i'm guessing he can either hit me or Go up there, jump up there, something like that. One or the other. So I'm going to have to run around this very small little space with that <laughs> after I take out the dogs because those guys have to go. So so that's where I'm at right now. And I know that, that that is precisely the thing you're talking about where it's like, nope, you can't you know, range them. And mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, well, I've, I've been using my scimitar and shield and I've been using like a light dex weapon, but yeah. I've still been running around with that. So, you know, like I have enough familiarity with that to be able to still use it. So, yeah. Yeah. Copper is a wall. Well, I, like, um, I'm sure by the time this comes out, I will have, you know, plugged away at him until he died from it. But I'm not worried about it. <laughs> I, I have ideas for what I'm going to do with him. So <laughs> Dark Souls is built around demolishing just that kind of attitude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm I'm excited for you. It's it's yeah. It's it's uh, I I know that you you have uh, like a big affinity for kind of puzzling things out and trying kind of oddball strategies and this is very much a game that um accommodates and rewards that. 
Well, I just found a merchant that has stuff that, like, buffs your weapon with enchantments. So I'm pretty sure there's a weakness in there that I just have to find out which one it is. It's yeah. only a matter of time. I'm not worried about it. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's kind of like, um, you know, Cole said with patience, you know, like you just have to keep picking at it until you figure out the thing. So <laughs> find the thing MacGuffin or yep. whatever you yeah. want to call it. <laughs> yep. Just just, you know, look, look until you find a crack. What yep. What is the MacGuffin for strategies, strategies, strategies? What? <laughs> so like, you know, the, the object that kind of gets you the you know physical object there, you know, the objective that you're trying to get next is the MacGuffin. Mm-hmm. So what is what is it's the new the next strategy? Would that still be a MacGuffin? Uh, I think so. I think MacGuffin is pretty portable, uh, just like Murphy's Law is. Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah. Toast. Yeah. Sometimes the MacGuffin <laughs> is toast. Sometimes <laughs> the MacGuffin is toast. <laughs> uh, especially if you're at a Denny's. Um, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Now, this this game is I'm still early enough in the game that I don't have to feel like, oh, I'm going to die and scream my head off. Like, I, I haven't even really mm-hmm. begun, you know, getting to the really hard stuff. So if I can't get past this guy, there's no hope for the rest of the game. So, you know, I'm how, like, no, oh, I how, how many bosses have you fought? I don't know. However many bosses there are before the Capra. Yeah. So you see so <laughs> not probably, many you, like you, you probably did Taurus and Bell Gargoyles and then Capra. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I just summon Solaire. By the way, the way Solaire pops out is hilarious. <laughs> when he does the uh, the praise the sun, I just totally am just waiting for him to just start a song and dance. I really am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there, there, there's all kinds of stuff that's gonna start making sense to you now. Like this is uh, this is a wonderful time. Like you know, experiencing this game vicariously for for the first time vicariously through somebody. Like just when you know when you're in the slack and you're saying oh, I'm playing this and everybody just starts like just ooh, let their ears perk up like the we're all chasing that feeling again. <laughs> I remember my first Dark Souls. <laughs> and you know how many people in the Slack channel because I've been posting in the bonfire side chat uh, area about this um, because I figured everybody would be entertained by my commentary <laughs> uh, as an ignoramus, you know, and so. Um, the fact that uh, so many people are like, I wish I could go back and experience it for the first time again. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, whoa. <laughs> oh, man. I'm cool. not addicted. I'm not addicted. <laughs> keep, 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 I can keep, stop anytime I want to. <laughs> keep a surprise of your progress. Yeah, shall yeah. do. Yeah. Um, I have a very small game to talk about, uh, by which I mean a game that you can only play for five minutes a day unless you want to pay a lot of money. What game is that? <laughs> uh, so this is a game called Triple Triad. Um, people may recognize this uh, as the card game from Final Fantasy VIII. The amazing card game yeah, from Final okay. Fantasy VIII. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this was released on the Final Fantasy Portal app, which is the the the, the just the most goddamn ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Wait, is, um, this, is this eight or is this nine? Uh, eight. Nine had a version of this, but it was not as good. Okay. Yeah, it was it was it was like Tetra Tetra something. Um, I, I forget what it was. Uh, but uh, but yeah, Triple Triad. Like the actual rule set for it is is is, is pretty great it's really simple you have a you have a hand of five cards each of these cards has a character on it uh but that's mostly just art uh to kind of like sit at the center of these four numbers there's a number for each side of the card top bottom left and right Mm -hmm. and you have a grid of uh it's it's a three by three grid and the first person plays their card somewhere on that grid and you have to place your card and if two adjacent numbers um uh, uh if, if if you okay so you so you place it next to it and then whichever number is bigger you actually win that battle and then you take that card and whoever has the most cards at the end of this wins and different cards are balanced like ooh this has a very strong top or a very strong left or you know this one's kind of like a really good corner card like it's it's a relatively simple game but there's kind of strategies in how you build your build your deck and the numbers are small enough that I can you know kind of like understand it um, and the mechanics are simple enough that it's not like a hearthstone where like everything is just flashing lights and numbers and I can't really, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, make, make heads or tails of it. Um, and there are special rule sets too, where it's like, if the, if you place your card in between two other cards and the left and, and the left and right numbers match, 
between them like oh you take you take both of those and there's ways to like make a bunch of combos out of them um and in final fantasy 8 that worked really great because those cards could be turned into spell casts which could in turn be equipped to a character to really max out their their stats and that was a way to kind of get around their super kind of kind of like interesting and you know i'm gonna say great um leveling system in that game was like the you know the, the card game with its simple base rules and kind of the different ways you know the different permutations uh you know throughout it and what it could net you um made it just a wonderful addition to that game um now on mobile, even removed of those kind of like meta game kind of things where you're, you're using this to improve your chances of, of succeeding in the main game, like the actual rule set is still fine. Like you're in there, you're making these quick decisions and they're ramping up uh, the number of characters that you're fighting against or, you know, the, like, like the difficulty there. Each character kind of has uh, cards from their own little corner of the series. And it's not just Final Fantasy VIII stuff. So you are actually getting characters and things from throughout the, you know, from throughout the series, which is nice. Like it, you know, m- makes the collector and me happy, you know, to do this. The problem is this is kind of my first time really being burned by an energy system. Uh-oh. What do you mean? Mm. Uh, you know, in mobile games where you, they give you a certain number of plays for free, um, yeah. and then you have to wait a certain amount of time in order to go back into it, um, in order to play again, unless you want to give them a whole bunch of money or give them, you know, some, you know, some number of money because you want to play again now, or you want to rush production in Tiny Tower, or you want to rush production in in Farmville. Any of those kind of things. This is, you know, where a lot of places, a lot of games and developers make a lot of their money in mobile is by they, kind they of prey on impatience. Yes. And so, you know, I kind of went into this understanding that it was free to play and like maybe it wasn't going to be too bad. Like whatever uh, I, you know, I, I can just play whatever they give me for free and collect my cards. And that is going to be a OK and fine. However, a match of triple triad lasts 45 seconds to a minute. Hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you get five plays a day plus one extra one um, just for playing every single day. So every, you know, if you, if you log in, you get a bloop and <laughs> every half hour, one of those little crystals, one of your energy units recharges, but it won't go above the five. So when you wake up in the morning, you have those five sitting there and then those are gone unless you come back, you know, two and a half hours later to play your five again and then come back. But the problem is like, that's not enough, like five minutes every two and a half hours. Like if I want to sit down and play some triple triad. So here's the thing. You have those crystals and you have that energy. Um, and if you want to, I was like, okay, well, I'll just give them, uh, I'll pay them $20. If I, if I wanted to pay them $20 to have this, uh, uh, system kind of like relaxed, right? Like so, they, to own the game essentially. Yes. To own the game or to make it like, okay, so now you night and like, now you can regenerate 20 crystals at a time. Well, no, a dollar gets you a certain number of gill, but there's a, but there's a bulk discount as you're doing this. And then the, you know, that, that, that's your gold that you get and you can't get gold anywhere else. And then you have to take that gold and you have to use that. And it's not a straight one-to-one comparison. And there's a, there's a bulk discount on the crystals as well. So essentially what they've created is a, a, a black box that you put money into and you have no idea how many extra turns you're going to get out of it, except to see like that at the lowest kind of like the worst economy of scale, you're going to get um, basically one round per dollar, which means you're paying a dollar for 30 to 45 seconds of, uh, of play or 45 seconds to a minute of play, which is unacceptable even even like the worst round of pac-man lasts longer than that (laughs) and that's just a fucking quarter yeah so like this is just incredibly botched they have an an excellent game you know as simple as it is that like made me feel like i imagine hearthstone people feel like in having this you know, the, 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 this card based game with art and music and characters and stuff that you're familiar with and playing it. And like, this is going to be something I'm going to dip into for a little bit, or I'll be able to pull it out in between calls at work and just kind of like rock this out. But the individual units are too small and they're asking too much to like get around that. So like, instead of doing what they want me to do, which is uh, giving them a couple of bucks, you're not getting anything out of it. 
And, you know, instead of just going in every two and a half hours, it's not even worth my time. It's not even worth the time to boot up the fucking terrible Final Fantasy Portal app mm-hmm. to, you know, to go through this and, to you know, to, to, to go through the weird little splash page where they're trying to sell you on this or that. Like, I don't need marketing. Like, if I had a little triple triad doodad that I could put on there and, like, it would just give me a little a, a little bloop when it was ready to play, okay, maybe. But if you enable the, the, the alerts for that, you, you know, you're just saying, hey, Square Enix, sell me stuff. Yeah. And, and I don't want that. Like... This is this is botched, you guys. And I And this is like the official licensed one too, so it's not like a knockoff and you know, someone else could do it right. This is this is canon. <laughs> yes, this <laughs> is th- 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 this is canon. And it's all numbers, right? Like if they go in and say, like, okay, you know, like may- maybe we didn't do this right, here's here's a fix as they rebalance it. Like that's something they can do, but I can't see anybody doing anything that would get them less money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like the, the, the like the money to goodwill uh, kind of equation is so skewed there. Yeah. I don't know. Like this is, you know, like even with Plants vs. Zombies, too, I was like, ah, it's kind of a bummer. But like this, it's just a way to play the harder version of the game. That's fine. It's a little bit gross that they keep pushing it. But whatever. Like this is the first time I've really been like heartbroken by an energy system in the in a game and in, in, in any kind of like mobile game. And so that's weird in 2015 to say that. Yeah, it's. I think it, it sucks if it's anything like the game from Final Fantasy IX, which I which I had a little bit of experience with. Like it's heartbreaking because there is so much potential there, and it is such like a perfect fit for mm-hmm. mobile. Yeah, you just you you drag your little, your little cards around. Like it, it like the the interface inside the game is okay. Like it explains, <laughs> you know, it, like it, it explains the different rule sets, and it gives you plenty to work with. And the art is super charming too. Like it's it's great, but it's terrible. It's great, but it's terrible. <laughs> it is it is terrible because it has the potential to be so great. Yeah, yeah. So so if they had a fixed price for this game like ahead of time and and no sort of pay to play how much would you pay for it fifteen dollars okay yeah Hoo-ah. on a mobile device no well, i you know my 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 equation is kind of skewed <laughs> it's just kind of like I mean, as long as it's not 20 bucks i'm in yeah yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> so yeah like so i was i pay that like you know like i understand that square charges a lot more for their stuff and i expected it to be that way but like ah man like if you put fifteen dollars into this you could blow through that in a day yeah, which I'm sure there are some people out there who are who are doing. And they're that. whales. It's just so gross. Yeah. But that's all I've been playing. Like, uh, is Paper Mario and Dark Souls Two: Scholar of the First Sin. August is fucking nuts. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. uh, let's see here, uh, Ben. How about you? So I've only played one game, uh, but I played a multiplayer game called Towerfall. I don't know if we've talked about it on the podcast or not. Briefly. Okay. So it, I, I, it's, I played it on, I think, PS4, but I assume it's just on any sort of multiplayer console. It's not a terribly complex game. Um, it was originally an Ouya exclusive, and then it came to PS4, and then it's on Steam, too. Okay, gotcha. So it's just a pretty simple multiplayer game. Uh, when we played, it was four player game. So I think it plays up to four players. Um, but it's, it's very akin to the Mario, uh, competitive game, uh, from way back when, where it's like Mario versus Luigi and then you run around the map and then there's turtles that come out to try and kill you. It's kind of like that. Mm -hmm. Um, except you have four players. Uh, the map is somewhat dynamic where things can kind of change to make you either rush to the middle or avoid certain parts of it. Um, you can fire arrows at any given time, um, as long as you have arrows, uh, you can pick up upgrades to upgrade your arrows and the goal is to just kill everyone else on the map. (laughs) And so you can either shoot them with an arrow or you can jump on top of them Mario style to (laughs) kill them. And then based on how many kills you get, you get that many points for the round and then you play to like 10 or 15 points. So it's just a short little party game. That's kind of short and sweet. Uh, but it ended up being a lot of fun. Uh, I don't know how much to say beyond that. I mean, it's, it's kind of similar to, uh, uh, what is it? The car soccer game where it's just like <laughs> short and sweet. Uh, rocket league. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
but there's not that much depth to it. You know, you do, uh, yeah. you're not playing it for the narrative or any sort of deep philosophical meaning. So. How, how, how does the archery manifest? Because I haven't actually played this <laughs> frantically. Um, <laughs> I mean, like, so are you? Is is it like a like an Angry Birds like drag and release kind of thing where you're sending an arc out or? Uh, so you have an air uh, one button to hold to prime your arrow, and then you use a joystick to pick the direction. Oh wow. So what it ends up being, though, is somebody's nearby and you just spam the arrow button and really hope that you kill that person. So, yeah. Hmm. But the cool part about it is so you, you'll you run out of arrows and then you won't be able to use that anymore. Um, and so you have to, like, run around and find pickups. Like, so anywhere you shoot an arrow, the arrow will still be there. But if somebody picks it up, then they have it then. <laughs> um, and one of the cool mechanics, too, is the map wraps around, like, right to left, top to bottom. So... <laughs> If somebody is like above you and is threatening you to jump on top of you, you can try and find a hole in the bottom of the map and then fall through and then you have the edge on them. <laughs> so it just it changes it like it changes what you have to pay attention to. Yeah, yeah. Huh. It's very uh being John Malkovich esque chase like at, <laughs> yeah. sometimes. Yeah. And it's like asteroids. Like it's a, it's it's back to that classic uh that classic arcade style. Mm-hmm. Hmm. This is the, 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 this is the, this is so you're playing with four people the way it was intended to be played. Mm-hmm. And they have different characters like uh, they have like, uh, you know, like different classes of characters, but they apparently make no difference in as far as what their abilities are. So they're <laughs> pretty much just for show. Yeah. So, nice. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Dennis, how about you? Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I I don't have anything new per se, but I do have an expansion on on several things that I've played recently. Um, so those things specifically are Bro Force, which continues to be awesome, um, Hearthstone, which continues to be an addiction, and then Heroes of the Storm, which I continue to be completely unable to make heads or tails of. So um, <laughs> it's a you know it's it's been fun to kind of get a little more exposure to all those things. Um, Bro Force, I we uh, got a co-op session going. Uh, me, Jala, who else was in it? I think Graham was in it, and then Phil Holmes, maybe. Mm-hmm. I, I feel no. bad. I can't. I can't remember exactly who was in it. Um, but but getting the full four-player experience was a lot of fun. Um, and I feel like the chaos is starting to settle down a little bit. So when I talked about it last, um, I complained that. You kind of there. There were portions where I just didn't realize I was dead, or didn't realize I was still alive because there was so much going on, um, and I feel like that's being distilled down a little bit for me as I as I learn how to watch the game I'm playing. If that <laughs> makes any sense, how to how to read the screen. Yeah. Um, I I can't say that we I've seen anything as I've gone and unlocked more levels that's like revolutionary to the core concept. Of what's going on like they haven't put any huge tweaks or spins on what you're doing but they don't really need to because it's what you're doing um is <laughs> is a lot of fun um and i i expect to play that one co-op uh many many more times so uh you know we'll, we'll definitely look for other people who have that to to play with hmm. and they sell it in a four pack which um I was I was tempted to get, but I uh, you know so if you if you know so if you know three people who might be interested in playing, that's a that's a great way to get the game. I like it when they it? do that. Oops. How much is it? Did you ask Ben? Yeah, uh, I I paid I think fifteen dollars ish for it. I mean, ten to fifteen dollars. I don't remember the exact yeah. price point. I think um, it was ten. One. I don't know. Whatever. Maybe it was ten with the four pack or something like that. Or it could have been ten. Like the, the, it was, it was a non-trivial discount with a four pack. Okay, hmm. but in, in that range, in the in the it is it is sub one coal. <laughs> the coal unit <laughs> of yeah money yeah <laughs> makes me sound so wasn't, privileged. I feel, I feel it, shitty about that. Wasn't it Mikhail that played? Oh yeah, it was. You're right. Yep, that was our group. Hmm. Um, so yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, and, well, and when when you mentioned um, the sunglasses and the Matrix, I just thought of Neo from this game. <laughs> <laughs> this game is subsuming the references that it makes. <laughs> Basically, yeah. yeah. 
Uh, any any questions on Broforce? It's uh, it's a lot of fun. We should yeah. play co-op sometime, everyone who is listening. <laughs> yes, everybody needs to play that game with other people. It's a lot of fun. It's one of those games that, like, I'm I'm checking right now. No, I don't have it. I thought that I did, but yeah. Well, it's <laughs> through, it's through more something. it's it's more fun. Like I ran through Metal Slug and and some other ones like that with people recently before Broforce, and really Broforce is a lot more fun for me. So yeah. But it's in that same vein of like metal. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. I don't have any questions about it. I'm happy you're having fun with it. Yeah. Uh, Hearthstone is Hearthstone. They just did their gigantic update. Um, and I have not bought a single uh, <laughs> new card from the new expansion because um, I am a curmudgeon and I don't like uh, <laughs> spending real life money on on the game. So I will continue <laughs> just slowly plotting my way through the single player expansions using in game currency. Um and I, you know, I'm having a moderate amount of success, um, just being, being my old, only gold Dennis self, which is, which is <laughs> fine. It's a, yeah. a fun little game. Uh, and then, uh, the MOBA Heroes of the storm. Um, I played, uh, significantly more and I learned just how easy it is to lose giant swaths of time in that game. <laughs> <laughs> and keep in mind, this is like the fast paced short, uh, MOBA light. <laughs> How, how long? How long is each round? It's it's been clocking in for me around twenty minutes. Okay, which you know I, I think the other ones clock in around forty. So yeah, forty five is what I've heard. Yeah, so so less than half of the time, and still it's just so easy to be like, oh my god, I've been playing for two <laughs> hours. Um, what the hell happened? Um, but it's still, I'm 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 the time is not going to waste in that. I, I think it's, it's, I'm in that most enjoyable phase with these online games where you can feel yourself making tangible progress every time you play it. <laughs> um, and so I feel like I'm learning and I'm getting better, uh, noticeably every round that I play. And, you know, you, you always hit that point where you feel like you've kind of plateaued. And so you need to try something drastically different, um, or just take some space from the game or start investing money. Um, yeah. but I, you know, I'm not there yet. So it's, it's still a very, a very rewarding experience hmm. to, uh, to play. Nice. The, uh, the, the available cast of characters shifted. So there's five new heroes to play with, um, which got me to try something different. Who's your, uh, who's your new go-to? Uh, I can't pronounce the name. <laughs> Which it's, game it's is like, it? Who are they from? I think it's from Diablo. I'm not sure. Mm. I'm very unfamiliar. As as much time I, as I spend with the Blizzard games, it's the two games that reference every other Blizzard mm. games oh, yeah. or all the other B- Blizzard games. So, I've, <laughs> you know, I know most of the characters in Hearthstone from Hearthstone. Yeah. And I know most of the characters in, in Heroes of the Storm from Heroes of the Storm. Um, but the character is actually at the top of some of the, um, like, best characters for quick match lists that um i've read huh. it's like a new something it's like a giant spider dude uh people are yelling at their various speakers right now <laughs> um I'll, I'll google it when there's a break and i'll come back with the name um just randomly at some point later on um but it's it's a very different so the first character um the Raynor um or Raynor was um like a, a ranged assassin mm-hmm. uh so you know you're you're not getting down into the fray um or if you are you're doing something horribly wrong whereas this new one that i was playing is is very much a be in the middle of the fray character so a, a tank um and the the um so that that was a very different style but all the all the things that I'd learned about kind of positioning and deciding when to engage and making sure you're with a teammate, those things transferred between the characters really well. Hmm. So yeah, still having fun with it. I don't know, even even at just twenty minutes around, um, I don't know how sustainable it is for me to to invest time in this, but yeah. I'm I'm enjoying it while it lasts. So so here's Here's a question that I, you know, that, that I have. You're playing with, with with randos, right? Like you're you're jumping yeah. into public matches. Correct. Okay. Um, how is the community in this? Like, is chat enabled by default? Are people patient with you as you kind of get your legs under you, especially as you're kind of changing from one character to another? Like, basically, how toxic is the environment? <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, so the environment is primarily silent. Um, the chat is not used a lot and I, I will try to like, if I'm making a decision like, Hey, I'm going to be in the bottom lane or, um, you know, 
wait until I respond. I'm almost back or something like that. I'll type it in. And people actually respond to those just through their actions, not through actual typing. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I'll like I'll, I'll be like, I need help in the bottom lane. And suddenly two people, uh, two teammates will appear to, to help me out. So people are responsive. But I really can't remember someone typing like I've been doing into the chat outside of just good game at the end. Um, which is really weird. It's not hostile at all. It's not, you know, I've never had anyone question what I was doing or call me out. Um, but at the same time, it's just this weird silence going on for such a team focused game. Um, I have not unlocked team league yet. So, you know, I, I have not, um, gotten access to the more organized levels of the game. Um, I imagine there might be more of that there, but, um, for the time being, it's, it's just kind of a, a, obedience but silent counterpart to playing <laughs> get, get gg at the end and that's about it yeah well that's good <laughs> yeah it's not it's not bad therefore it is good yeah uh, you know, so, so silence <laughs> is golden yeah huh well and especially like i said and, and that's I, I would understand if it was a completely toxic ho- toxic hostile environment i would also understand if just it was this nothingness where no one responded to anything and i might as well be shouting into the void mm-hmm But it's this weird, like, hybrid where people actually do, like, read it and respond to it. Just everyone else has found a better way to communicate than me, apparently. So I'm sure I'll discover, like, after, after, you know, getting responses to this episode, there is a voice chat that I can enable or something (laughs) like that. Yeah. Um, But yeah, for now, for now, I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Um, I, I'm curious. So you, you've not been able to jump in with anybody from the network, like anybody who listens? No, everyone is talking about Hearthstone nonstop. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say the co-op channel is pretty much like the Hearthstone channel. At least that's how the slackers are liking to call it. Um, it sometimes gets hard to actually talk about co-op stuff because they're talking about Hearthstone stuff there. It's, it's, so, like, no. yeah, that gets lost in there sometimes. All right, game day decision. Should I just create a Hearthstone channel? At this point, you might. I think you would make a lot of people very happy. Okay, yeah. Cool. <laughs> then I will do that. <laughs> Ah, a noob Arak. Is An- the, is- yeah, that, that that sounds like a Diablo ass name. It does, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> hmm. It looks like a Diablo ass character too. Hmm. Cool. Well, that is uh, that's great. I'm happy you're having a good time with it. I don't know that I have any questions about it other than the community stuff. I don't know. Like, I, I can't envision a world where I actually like dip into it, but your recommendation on it, or at least your positive experience m- makes me feel like uh, <laughs> I'll be able to get over. I-, I would be able to get over a hump with that, that I wasn't able to get over with like league of legends. Yeah. It's, it's now not a, now not a question of it being like possible for you to do it. Now it's a question of you having, you know, it being high enough in the priority list to do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. Cool. Uh, do you all want to button it up? Do sure. It. Thank you so much for um, listening to this episode of The Level, level number 118. The numbers, they are just flying by. And also, Jala, thank you for uh, for, for filling in and for uh, coming in and hosting uh, in David's stead. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Yeah. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> I am trying to think of what uh, what we can do when this episode comes out. Uh, this is the day of the first uh, public uh, Duck Feed Live event. Oh, sure. Yeah. So cool. if you're listening to this um, in the afternoon when this is likely to go out, uh, I recommend going and uh, checking out the Facebook groups or on, uh, you know, the old uh, the, 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 the old websites and things or the Patreon as well. Um, in order to uh, see that, Gary and I are going to be on there answering your questions. Backers get, uh, get priority. And also uh, the Slack channel, which we talk about a lot. Uh, that's kind of the live chat for this. So uh, come hang out. It's nine o'clock on Friday. Uh, if you missed that, which is likely, I'm sorry to hear that. But there's a bunch of stuff happening with the Patreon uh, that, uh, that, 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 that that is pretty cool. So go and give that a look if you haven't yet. That is patreon.com slash duckfeed TV. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other like admin stuff. It's been a while since we've got a review. Um, I know I say that every time, uh, but I'm going to make an earnest plea uh, to uh, anybody who has not. Uh, you know what I mean, Vern? Um, <laughs> anybody, anybody who is who who has not um, given us a review, I know that uh, uh, going into iTunes sucks, 
and it gets more inscrutable and baffling every single day. Uh, but it does help us out. Like every time we get a review, we show up in a chart for like a little bit. And if we keep getting reviews, more people can find out about us. So uh, even if you just click a click a star rating, uh, that goes, uh, you know, it, it, it helps not just our egos, but uh, it helps more people find the show. Um, yeah. What else am I missing? Do that thing or otherwise I'll cry. You don't yeah. want to make me cry, do you? <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Emotional appeal. Yeah, we're, 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 holding, we're holding tears hostage. <laughs> Four out of five doctors would give us a review. Oh, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, So uh, back Gary's Kickstarter, that's duckfeed.tv slash souls of darkness. Um, and yeah, I want to go to sleep. So I'm going to uh, round us around the bend. <laughs> around the bend. Around the bend? <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's, um, around... that's a title. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but uh, but yeah, this is, uh, I've been Cole Ross at Cole Ross on Twitter. I've been Dennis Furia at D Furia on Twitter. Always Jalachan. That is all. <laughs> sometimes Merkelizer at Twitter. <laughs> yeah, occasionally Merkelizer. <laughs> Only sometimes. Every once in a while, like every few months, maybe. <laughs> mm-hmm. And until next time, put the cap on the pen, you dummy. The voice sync is going to dry up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, I only had two other titles um, in the uh, in the hopper. Looking for sunglasses was uh, mm-hmm. was the other one, um, and then around the bend. <laughs> so, ben. Did anybody else in have at, one? In at the bell. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got you got mine as soon as I heard it. Yeah, yeah.